dictionary now says truth is what you make it to be. What's truth for you may not be the truth for someone else, but I want you to know the Bible still says that lie is a lie, isn't it? And truth is truth. But he said they use their tongues for deceit. And then, in the same verse again, he said there, and the poison of asp is under their lips. That venom of asp is under their lips. They're, they're moral poison. Moral poison. I was thinking, I was going to say this at the ball game last night, but I didn't get around to it. The ball game ended too quick. <laughs> Actually, it's over with the first quarter, but you know, <laughs> I hate to say that, <clears throat> but it was. But I, I was going to say that if electricity comes from electrons, does morality come from morons? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Morality comes from our Lord, doesn't it? Immorality might come from morons. But the thing about it is, he said here that there's a moral poison about man that's there. Wow. And then the tenth thing is, get this. In verse, 13, in verse uh, 14, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Now, <clears throat> have you ever heard, and I know, I know you have and you don't like it, I don't either, but you've been around people sometimes and every other word that comes out of their mouth is a curse word. And they think nothing of it. I get so ticked off at TV because Andy Griffith ought to be on every day 14 times a day, but it's not. But I look at it and we find a lot of these things they call reality programs. I don't watch it because there's no such thing from Hollywood that's real. I want you to know that. Even little Fanny Boober, whatever her name is, not Fanny Boober. Honey Boober. You can tell I don't watch it. But what I'm saying is this, that they said, and a matter of fact, there used to be a, used to be, uh, Troy used to take care of the alligators down in Louisiana. And it used to be real good, but then they decided it's not really real until they start cursing every time they get a gator. They used to didn't do that. They said, now we've got to put curse words under to make it real. Folks, let me tell you what the real thing is. Dude. He said, here, their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. I'm glad. Yeah, have you ever seen the, the, the movie, the, you know, the Christmas story at Christmas time? And they put the soap in his mouth. Have you ever had that done to you? If you have, raise your hand. I have. And it ain't a pretty sight. It's not nice. It is nasty. To wash your mouth out with soap. Ugh. Life boy. <laughs> But you know what? I'm glad when I got saved. Because I wasn't one to curse anyway. But I'm glad that he washes our mouth out. Don't you? I'm glad of that. But he said here, and not only cursing, but bitterness. Bitterness. He said, that's man. That's a horrible thing about man. There's so much bitterness about man. You know, I, I, somebody said today to me, I asked them how they were this morning. They said, well, I'm really good. Then they said, you know what? Every day is good. And it is. But you know what? People can find things to be bitter at every day, can't they? But in their mouth is bitterness. And then the eleventh thing is found in verse 15. He said, their feet are swift to shed blood. You mean people are killing people? Yes. People are killing people. Children are killing children. Think about that. That's the horrible thing about man. And then he says in verse, in verse 12, he says this again. They are going out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. Remember, we go back to that. There's none that doeth good. Wow. And then look at verse 16. Destruction and misery are in their ways. They always use the old saying, misery loves company. If you ever hear that? So, destruction in a way. Well, if I'm going to be miserable, you are too. That's me. That's man's attitude. That's man's thinking a lot of times. 
absolutely horrible destruction. And verse 17 says, In the way of peace they have not known. How can a man know peace? When you read all these things and see about man, how can he know peace within himself? We'll get that in a moment. That man alone can't know that. And then verse 18 says, There is no fear of God before their eyes. Wow. Ecclesiastes says this. In chapter 12, in verse 13 and 14, I believe it is, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. Wow. But man has no fear of God. And you know, it's just like people will say a lot of times, I don't fear Him because I don't fear death. Death is not what you need to fear, folks. It's what comes after. Yeah. If you don't know Jesus. Because the Bible says it's appointed a man wants to die. And as J.K. said one time, death ain't no big deal. But it's what comes after if you don't know Jesus Christ. That's what you need to fear. But there's no fear of God. And that's the most awful, awful, awful account of all. And then I look at verse 20 and I see this, I see this horrible things about man. And then I look at verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by law is the knowledge of sin. And I look and I think, wow. <laughs> All's right in here. That's how terrible man is. And the problem is, there is no justification by the law. Can't be justified by the law. <laughs> I've got to share this. Jeanette was talking to Molly the other day down in Texas at Molly with, with Tupperware. And, and not Tupperware, but she was with Avon, and she won this big tent through her things. And so they had this place in, down in Texas where they're at. She has a big tent that she really can't do a whole lot with because you have to get a permit to set it up to even do anything. <laughs> so Jeanette told Molly she thought she might get in trouble one day because she's setting it up anyway and doing anything. And Jeanette said, Molly, what do you think? You're going to think you're going to get. Say it's okay because you're under grace. I don't think the Texas Rangers will do that. But what I'm saying is, he says here then, your man is this way and the law can't do anything about it. Only thing the law does is give you the knowledge of sin that you're doing wrong, but they can't do anything about it. But boy, then I read on. <laughs> then you read on in that same chapter. Look at verse 21. Get this. We had the solution. We had the solution to the problem of this filthiness of the horrible things about man. We have the greatest answer. We have the greatest solution. And the solution is not saying, well, I'm going to do my best to be better. I'm going to do my best to live right. I'm going to change my lifestyle. <laughs> but that won't do any good. Listen to this. <laughs> Verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in G of Jesus Christ unto all, upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through redemption that is in Christ Jesus. There's the answer. There's the answer. Yeah, there might be horrible things about man. And you think I've got to change. Well, you'll never change unless you come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's right. Think about that. <clears throat> Amen. Wow. Get this. For all, every one of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is, which is in Christ Jesus. And I... The next verse says, Whom God has set for to be a perpetuation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. Righteousness by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. All of that can change. Wow. Justification, he says, first of all. That to be declared righteous by God. And that just, word justification is, a, is the language of the law court. And it means to, like I said there, to be declared righteous in God's court. Now, we look at those terrible things about man and how can we be declared righteous? 